Tis the season to be really jolly here on Miss Earth Crown. After a successful and unparalleled coverage of Miss Earth 2020, Miss Earth Crown moves forward with a new look, a new brand, and new original content. This is MEC TV. This Christmas season, witness the premiere of our brand new show, In Focus, a show where we ask important questions one on one. And for the premiere season of In Focus, all eyes are on Miss Earth USA 2021. And our American Queens will be here to prove why they should be the next Miss Earth USA. And in the coming year, get ready for a bigger and bolder Miss Earth 2021, the MEC coverage. With our shows that will definitely keep you posted. MEC in focus. One-on-one, -on -one, hot button, hot topics. MEC inside stories. Interviews with present and past queens and more special guests. An MEC pageant roundup. Your weekly dose of Miss Earth pageant analysis during the Miss Earth season. So join us starting this holiday season and in the coming year with a heavy dose of Miss Earth that only MEC TV can deliver. Hello there, everyone. This is Noisa Milano, and we are back on our live interviews here on MEC TV in focus for our special coverage of Miss Earth USA 2021. My name again is Noisa Milano, and I am the chief correspondent of Miss Earth Crown. And first, before we begin, I would like to um, greet everyone. Um, a merry, merry Christmas. I do hope that you had um, a lot of fun and a lot of um, a lot of uh, happy moments during the Christmas break. And now we are back on our live coverage for Miss Earth USA 2021. And we have a very special guest for our resumption of our In Focus series. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce our beautiful guest for today. Miss Maryland Earth 2021. Let's all welcome Megan Cox. Hi, Megan. Hi. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our special guest for today, Megan Cox. First, um, maybe you can say hi to all of our Miss Earth Crown fans today. Yes. Um, good evening here in Maryland, but as uh, I was speaking with Noi earlier, good morning to those of you in the Philippines, but thanks for joining us. This is our special guest for today, Megan. Oh, sorry, yes. Megan, this is going to be a really fun time. First, I'd like to ask, how was your Christmas back there in Maryland? How was everything? It was good. We even had a little bit of snow. So that was really exciting. Sometimes it's a hit or miss in Maryland, whether you get um, a white Christmas, but we did get some snowflakes. So that was exciting. There you go. And of course, we are so happy that you are um, basically our very first guest for our continuation of our MEC TV in focus. Again, you look stunning tonight oh, back you. there in Maryland. Yes, yes. And we are going to have this really great conversation for um, Miss Maryland Earth for today. But then, Megan, allow me to read some of our fan comments because there are already some fans tuned in. Oh, awesome. Allow me to say hi. Maybe you can uh, help me in saying hi to Ralph Sambat. Hi, Ralph. Thanks for joining. Hi, Ralph. Ralph is one of our avid viewers and supporters for Miss Earth Crown. We also have here um, Emmanuel Feliciano. We can say hi to Eman. Hi, Emmanuel. Thanks okay. for Okay, this is so funny. 
Yes, this is so funny because Eman, he says here, I'm a big fan of MEC. Well, he is one of our hosts also. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, that's the fan then. <laughs> yes, and he is in Japan right now. So, hello, Eman. Oh, Thank you for tuning awesome. in. And we also have here someone coming in from, okay. Um, happy viewing from Norma Laxon. There you go. Hi, happy viewing po mga kapatid. There. There you go. And one of our team members is also watching right now. Good morning, Miss Megan Cox. Remmer de la Rosa Juarez is also watching. Hi, Miss Remmer. There you go. And one last before we start the conversation for today. We also have one of her sister queens, Sarah Yay. Massingale. Hi, Sarah. Can't wait to meet you in Orlando either. There you go. So once again, to all of the fans, um, this is only the, the beginning. Really great conversation with the beautiful Megan Cox of Maryland. And we are going to have an opportunity to read some of your questions later on. But for now, we are going to start off with our... Um, special segments that we prepared for Megan Cox, the lovely Miss Maryland Earth. And this is one of our signature segments here. I'm going to flash this one right now. Okay. And this is one of our signature segments. Okay, that's not me. There you go. There. Okay. Let me just remove. Add stream. There you go. Okay. I'm going to have this one first. Okay. So we're going to start off with our special segments here because here on Miss Earth Crown, we are really big on celebrating special occasions. And one of the special occasions that we are looking forward to right now is, of course, the brand new year. I, I don't know if you're going to agree, Megan. Absolutely. I think everyone is uh, ready for 2020 to be over. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> this is just one thing that we are so looking forward to. Yeah. With that, we're going to start off with one of our new segments here on Miss Earth Crown, which is what we call Megan's New Year Highlights. Yay! Oh. Okay, so what's, what's going to happen, Megan, is I'm going to ask you um, questions related to the year that was 2020 and the okay. year ahead, 2021. Okay there and we want to find out your answers to these questions just to get you uh, get, to get to know you a little bit more on a personal level sure. um the things that you like the things that you love all right so all right. are you ready for the very first question megan i am i'm ready there you go first one is this if there is one word that can describe your 2020 what word will it be Hmm. I'd have to say unexpected. There were a lot of things that I think everyone didn't expect in 2020, all the way from COVID-19 to life changes. So um, unexpected, I think, would be a perfect word. Wow. Unexpected. And in, in terms, of course, definitely in terms, of course, of like being unexpected, what were some of these unexpected events that you encountered? Um, well, COVID-19 is definitely on the top of the list. Um, I also bought a house, which kind of came out of nowhere. Um, I also got engaged, which was also extremely unexpected. So um, there's been a lot of a lot of crazy things going on. Wow. Wow. So congratulations. Actually, we have a special slide for that thing that you shared about your engagement. So we're going to talk about oh. that in a little bit. Okay. Thank you for answering that question. Okay, let's have the next one this time. Next one is, ooh, if you could hit the replay button to one specific event this 2020, what event would it be? I would have to say my crowning of Miss Maryland Earth 2020. Um, I won back all the way back in March, which seems like so, so long ago. Um, but it was such a fun experience. The event ended up going virtually at the last minute, which was kind of unfortunate. But um, it was 
a, a brand new experience. I videotaped um, my evening gown and swimsuit videos in my kitchen <laughs> with my uh, mm -hmm. dog in the background. So that was an experience. But um, I was on my way to work when they we were all on Zoom live and they announced me as the winner. So I just would love to relive that. Wow. Well, definitely one of the many one of the few things that we had to really be thankful for was the virtual editions of Miss Earth, specifically for Miss Earth USA. It was one of the, I think, one of the most, one of the unique experiences you had, Absolutely. right? Yes. There, yes, there you go. And again, from the virtual edition, you're going to compete for the live edition for 2021, yeah. which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Thank okay. you so much for sharing that. Next one. Let's have the next question for Megan. Okay, this one's kind of interesting. If you could include three items that you wish to put inside your 2020 time capsule, what would they be? Hmm, three items. I would have to say probably my Miss Maryland cra Earth crown, my Miss Maryland Earth sash, and also my gown. That was a very special gown to me. It was uh, made by one of my good friends. So those three things all revolving around Miss Maryland Earth. Okay. So if you if you uh, this if you um if you chose those items, for example. 20 years down the road, someone is going to get the time capsule and then they're going to discover it. What do oh, you want them me. to learn? The time capsule isn't for me. Yes, yes. For example, um, okay. you're, going, you're going to have the time capsule and you will have it discovered, for example, by your grandchildren 20 years down the road. Okay. Um. So I would still want to put uh, my sash in there since it does have the year on it so that they would know about that. I would also probably mm. include um, a face mask, as silly as it sounds, um, but because this is the year of COVID-19, so um, definitely something I'm sure, you know, grandchildren down the road are going to end up learning about. Um, and mm -hmm. the last thing I would say... Maybe some pictures just throughout the year, just to see how it was in 2020, to, so they can compare to um, whatever year it is when they open the time capsule. Correct. Yes, correct. I totally agree. And I think if they're going to open the time capsule, they're going to um, think, okay, I would want to, I would love to find out more about this woman who wore the crown and the sash. <laughs> So yeah. those are really great, you know, really great symbolisms of your year and who you were as a person in 2020. Exactly. So good answers. I love those. Thank, Thank you. you. Next one. Let's have this next question. Okay. Now let's go to 2021. If there is one thing you wish to aim to change or improve this coming 2021, what would that be? Um, I would like to continue to improve my, I guess, image, overall image of myself. Um, it's always a work in progress to build confidence within yourself. And that's something that I've been focusing on um, year after year. And I want that to be another goal of mine. Oh, I can't hear you. There we there go. You go. Okay, <laughs> there you go. So that's a really great um, response to like that question. But um, for example, um, let's like turn it a little bit around. If there is one thing that you did or that you were able to do in 2020 that you wish to continue this time, what would that be? Um, I'd have to go with my uh, water bottle business, Glitter and Glam. Um, it's an Etsy shop that I worked really hard on, and I love making custom reusable water bottles for people. So I would love to continue that in 2021. Yes, yes. And actually, I was, I'm really fascinated about the Glitter and Glam. I actually follow you now on your Instagram account. <laughs> and 
there are some things that we are, we're going to talk about. I think you have some samples there, which you're going to show yeah. us in a little bit, right? Yeah. Yay, I'm so uh-huh. excited for that. <laughs> great, great. There, okay. Now let's move on to the next one. I think this is, okay, this one. Megan, what do you consider as your proudest moment this past year? I'd have to go back to uh, crowning, being crowned as Miss Maryland Earth 2020. Um, mm-hmm. I actually broke my foot in February, the beginning of February. So um, I was in a cast for four weeks and mm-hmm. it was quite a struggle. I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to compete in March, but I worked hard. Um, I got that darn cast off and then I was crowned. So that was a really exciting moment. Wow, there you go. Well, I, I wasn't aware that there was that part of the um that part of your story that you were you ran into an accident and then you weren't able to yeah, okay. Um yeah. I'd like to I'd like to delve deeper into that. Um what okay. was your motivation? What was your motivation to still push through um despite the circumstances that you had to undergo? Sure. Um I guess really I wanted to be a part of this organization that focuses so heavily on saving our earth. It's something that was instilled in me as a little girl that I don't think I realized at the time of, you know, during my childhood, but I definitely appreciate now. And I'm just so thankful to be a a part of this organization. There you go. And I think your motivation and your um, dedication is actually paying off because after competing in the virtual edition, you are back for the 2021 edition, stronger yeah. and better than ever. Am That's I right. right. <laughs> there you go. Love it. Love it. Thank you, Megan. And I would, I would love to end this segment with this final question, this one. Okay, this final question. If there is like one thing that you wish to erase, okay? I, I, I wasn't able to flash it here. But if there's one thing that you wish to erase, magically erase from the 2020, from year 2020, what is that thing that you wish to erase magically? I would go with COVID-19, although it's taught us a lot of very valuable Mm -hmm. lessons. All the people that unfortunately lost their lives to COVID-19 and were affected in some way, shape, or form, which is every single person, um, I do wish Mm -hmm. that we could take some of that away. Yes, yes. And I think a lot of a lot of people um, wish for the same thing. But then, of course, I totally agree with you as well. Um, the crisis has taught, has taught us a lot of things, yeah. more things than one than we yeah. expected. So I, I really agree with what you, um, what you said. Thank you so much, Megan. And that concludes our first segment. Thank you, Megan Cox, Yay. for answering <laughs> our news, news highlights. Yay, thank you. Now we're going to um, look at the fan comments for now before we move on to our okay. next segment, which is another fun segment. Um, let's say hi to someone here, someone very familiar for you. Hi, this is Angel, Angel Strong. Yes. Hi. Hi, Angel. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And of course, one good thing about here, Megan, in on Miss Earth Crown is that the fans are also interacting with the queens in the comment section. One of her fans is saying hi back to Angel. Jan Paolo. <laughs> saying hi. Hi, hi Jan. <laughs> there you go. One more here. Um, we're going to um look at some of the comments here. Leo Serzo. Leo Serzo is saying hi to you right hello, now. Hello. And Leo is wishing you the best of luck on the final. Thank you so much. There you go. And I I should warn you right now, Megan, there are a lot of fan questions. There are a lot of fan questions which we're going to flash (laughs) at the tail end of our conversation. But for now, let's continue with our special um, segments here on Miss Earth Crown. 
which is we're going to continue with this one. This is what we call, the next one is very special because we want to know you on a personal level this time. We want to know about the many facets of Megan Cox. Yeah, I love this. Okay, <laughs> allow me to flash some of the pictures here. First of all, um, you are, aside from being a beauty passion contestant, you are also, quote unquote, Dr. Megan Cox. Maybe yes. you can share a little bit about that. Yes. So um, I graduated from pharmacy school in 2017 um, at the age of 22. So it was quite an accomplishment at a young age. I pushed through and got all of my schooling done within five years after graduating high school. So it was a long five years, but I'm so happy um, to be finished and now be a pharmacist for several years. It's such a rewarding experience. Wow, wow. I, I, I can just imagine it's a really proud moment. And I think I also saw one post um, from you that because of your experience as um, a pharmacy student and like finishing your doctor of pharmacy degree, you have become like an advocate for higher education. Maybe you can tell oh, us absolutely. a little bit about that. Absolutely. Um, you know, even though I've reached the top um, per se degree as a doctor of pharmacy, I continuously do lots of research as get my hands on as many educational programs and things that I possibly can. I um, just received another certification last month um, for anticoagulation, which is blood thinners um, in the pharmaceutical world. So I'm constantly um, furthering my education and I'm always, always, always an advocate for um, higher education for everyone. Yes, and you know what? Um, the good thing about queens like you, Megan, is that even if you have already finished your degree, you are an accomplished professional, so to say, and you are venturing into something new. Um, it your influence is like really dramatic, and it's really um, it's really um, really um, intense and immense. Um, just having a queen like you advocate for higher education, it's really going to influence more younger people yeah. to follow suit. Right. I hope so. I really do. That's definitely something I hope to inspire other young men and women. There you go. Thank you so much. And I'd like to ask one last one last question about your being a doctor of pharmacy. <laughs> um, what was one like life changing lesson about? I, I could just imagine that being a doctor, like your pursuit for being a doctor, is very challenging. What was one like one challenging, but rewarding lesson that you were able to encounter during your five years in uh, med medical school? I'd have to go along the lines of um, no sleep <laughs> doesn't mean that you have to give up. So uh, there were many, many, many sleepless nights during pharmacy school, and there were many rigorous courses. But, um, you know, determination, hard work, and perseverance definitely Push, I pushed my way through and now I get to look back and um, on those memories and see how far I've come. There you go. Wow, that's a really great um, take away from your experience, Megan. Thank you for sharing that to all of us. There. Now, let's move on to the next facet, which is, of course, Megan to family and friends. What a lovely photo this is. Oh, now, I'd you. like to ask Megan, if, if I'm going to ask your family members and friends, for example, who is Megan Cox? What, what is going to be their answer? Um, she is the charismatic queen through and through who loves to help others um, in any way possible. And I would hope to say that I'm pretty fun to be around as well. Wow, that's, that's a really, that's a really great <laughs> answer. And that's um, a really great like uh, look into the life of Megan Cox outside the world of pageantry. Now, in terms of your family, like um, I saw in the picture that you have, is it a family mostly um, composed of like women? Oh, yes. Yes. I have three younger sisters. Um, so in this picture here, that's my mom to my right. And then in mm. order, um, my sister Emily, my sister Sarah, and then my sister Rachel. 
Wow. Um, Megan, I'd like to ask, I, I really have to ask this question. What is, what is it like um, growing up in a family of women? Um, and how is that, uh, how did that change you or transform you in the person that you are today? I think it's um, really encouraged me to not necessarily view myself as just a female. So I can do anything a male can. Um, we like in my family to say we can do it a little better. <laughs> but um, growing up with three younger sisters, they were my inspiration um, to persevere through anything that I was going through. I wanted to be a great role model for them so that they could in turn be a great role model for others as well. Wow. Again, th that's a really great statement about the growing up in a house household um, uh, with women. It also makes you more empowered and more empowered um, with who you are as yes. a woman and as a person. Yeah. They're really great. Thank you for that. And of course, you have shared this a while ago, but let me dip into this a little bit once again. Okay. You already mentioned that you just recently got engaged <laughs> yes okay maybe you can tell us this side of you megan yes so um this is here on maryland maryland's eastern shore which is where i'm born and raised um this is in a small town called oxford um that my well now fiance proposed to me at um the eastern shore is kind of an island almost. We're surrounded by water. Um, so this was a great spot to not only capture the beautiful landscape of Maryland on the Eastern shore, um, but also such a special moment for the two of us. Okay, I, I, I will have to like pry a little bit. What was like the entire setup like? Was it like a surprise? engagement yes. was it a surprise yes. proposal what was it Absolutely like a surprise um so my with the oldest of my three younger sisters that we saw in the last picture um she just graduated with two master's degrees so she had me thinking all day that we were going to take her graduation pictures and maybe some pictures of the two of us um for christmas as well so she lured me to the spot where um, Craig, my fiance, was there waiting with a photographer. Wow. Yeah. Once again, on behalf of the entire Miss Earth Crown, congratulations, Megan, Thank on you. your engagement. Thank and you so I, much. And I think um, I, I am really sure in saying that your fiance is going to be very supportive of your journey this Absolutely. 2021 right Absolutely. as he was like supportive the entire time which is what we're going to, i'd like to segue to that now which is okay. your pageant story definitely mm -hmm. all of your experiences all of your like all of the backstories about you being like a pharmacy uh, like a, a doctor of pharmacy being like the fun loving daughter and sister and now <laughs> having like a fiance who supports you i think all of these things like is very um they contribute to your pageant story as well, which is what we're going to talk about now. Because okay. before, um, before you joined, uh, before um, venturing into Miss Earth USA, there you had a lot. You have like an extensive, if I say extensive, extensive pageant background. Now allow me to show some photos here. Sure. Let let us let's like throw back a little bit to, throw back a little bit to where it all started. I think you started doing pageants in 2017, right? Yes. That was my very first title I ever won, Miss Ocean City. Yes. And what was the, well, I mean, like, tell me, Megan, what was like, what was like the mo motivation to like start joining pageants? What was the story behind this? Um. So it was, Always something that I wanted to do um, growing up. I had watched, you know, Miss America, Miss USA. And mm -hmm. after I learned about the advocacy that young women get into with um, these different titles that they hold, that really drove me um, to join my first pageant. And Miss America was a great one to start with because of the scholarship opportunities as well. So right. 
I was able to use the money that I earned there to help pay some of my student loans, um, which has wow. always a huge help since I did graduate in 2017. Wow. And of course, um, I, I think the very first experience, the very first passion experience that you had, um, there is always like that learning, um, that, that learning curve, so, so to say. Absolutely. What was like the biggest learning that you um, gathered from that very first experience that you had? I would say it's crazy to think about, but for people that don't compete, Pageant girls aren't the mean pageant girls that you see on TV. Everyone is so mm -hmm. supportive. Um, and that was something that I guess I wasn't expecting necessarily because of what TV portrays. Um, but I've made some amazing friends through pageantry um, that I'm so thankful to have. But that was definitely one thing that was a shock, but a good shock. Yes, and I think this first passion experience was a really remarkable and a pleasant one, which made you decide to continue on joining your next two pageants, yes. 2018 and 2019. First, let's talk about 2018. What was this pageant and what was the entire experience like? Um, so I won the title of Miss Black Eyed Susan um, 2018, and actually a fun little tidbit. Um, for those of you that don't know, is this was my, I think, third or fourth local that I had competed in, the very last one mm -hmm. to be able to compete at Miss Maryland um, in the Miss America system that year. And I think this is a great way to show that, you know, hard work, dedication, and perseverance can get you where you want to be. So I, I didn't place um, my first couple pageants that year which was devastating to say the least, but I stuck with it and I came out on top with my Black Eyed, Miss Black Eyed Susan title. Yay, congratulations <laughs> on that. And um, I'd like to ask Megan, what made you continue? Of course, you already won a title in 2017. What made you continue on and still um, venture into like these other um, pageants in 2018 and 2019? What was your motivation? Um, I loved the advocacy that I was able to do through having these titles. A lot of people seem to listen more when you have a pretty sash and crown on your head. So that was just mm -hmm. really a way to voice my opinion, voice my beliefs, and um, voice things that really mattered to me. Yes, there you go. And of course, 2018 wasn't the the last one 2019 was another yes. like um a feather on your cap what was that pageant maybe you can tell us the story behind that yeah so that um was miss free state um that was another really fun pageant um i kind of decided to do last minute because it was my last year of eligibility so it was a go in go all um see what i could do and i was able to um have the or win the title of Miss Free State and go to Miss Maryland one last time. Yee, there you go. And mm -hmm. again, three titles in three years. Not yeah. too shabby, Megan. <laughs> Not too shabby. <laughs> and of course, from 2017, 2018, 2019, I think, um, I, I'm not sure if this, if, if this is actually accurate, but I think you have... Um, decided to venture into your biggest foray um, in the world of pageantry in Absolutely. 2020. Absolutely. And that is, of course, that is, of course, your Miss Earth USA um, competition in 2020. Maybe you can share your experience um, with the virtual edition. Yes. So, um, I didn't compete in the Miss Earth USA virtual competition. Um, some things came up with work, so I wasn't able to. But okay. preparing all the same because we were planning on going to Vegas um, for the 20 competition. So I was still preparing the entire time. Unfortunately, just last minute, I wasn't able to do it. Um, but okay. it was quite an experience just to prepare myself for a national pageant. I had never, um, I've never competed on a national level before. So 
being able to not only represent my state, which is a huge, um, huge gift that I'm so thankful for. Um, it was a lot of hard work just to prepare. Yeah, yeah. So again, uh, allow me to correct that. You were ready to compete, but then last minute you decided not to compete. Um, was it a hard decision, Megan? To um, oh, Of course, you said that you've already prepared a lot. You've already prepared a lot. And then, of course, last minute you had to decide, I think I'm not going to push through with the 2020 yeah. edition. What was? What are your emotions during that time? It was extremely difficult. Um, I knew that this was something that I truly wanted. So it was really heartbreaking when I wasn't able to um, complete out what I had worked so hard for. But the Miss Earth USA organization was amazing and allowed us to not only compete in the virtual pageant if we wanted to, but then also to compete in the in person 2021 pageant, which is now in Orlando coming up, um, I leave January 12th. So um, that was definitely a whirlwind of emotions. I was able to watch and cheer on my sister Queens when I got home from work that um, finals night, which was really exciting, but I was sad that I couldn't be a part of it. Yes, again, the 2020 edition of Miss Earth USA is really historic because that is the year when Lindsay Coffey won the crown and when it was actually the beginning of USA's victory. Yes. You won your very first crown at Miss yes. Earth 2020. Wow. So there you go. And I think um, I, I should say this, uh, Megan, your non-participation in 2020 wasn't really, may, maybe um, you were redirected to another path so to say, for 2021. Maybe you were meant to compete in 2021. That's because, right. Yes, um, maybe I can ask you a little bit about that. Um, sure. Why do you think 2020 didn't happen for you? And why do you think 2021 was your year, was supposed to be your year? Um, I think it's going to be my year, at least. Fingers crossed that's the plan um, to come out with the Miss Earth USA title. But um, 2020, you know, there were a lot of different things that happened anywhere from mm -hmm. COVID-19 to being crowned uh, Miss Maryland Earth. But um, COVID-19 being in the way of that mm -hmm. and back and forth. And I had a job change where I became the pharmacy manager of a um, store in CVS. And then I ended mm -hmm. up. Um, getting a leaving CVS and getting a new position as a pharmacist at an independent pharmacy close to home, buying a house. So there was a lot going on, but um, much along the lines of what you said is, I believe everything happens for a reason. So although I was extremely upset that I couldn't participate in the virtual pageant in 2020, um, I'm so excited to see what 2021 has in store. Yes. Now I'd like to do a follow up on that. Um, now that we have talked about extensively about your pageant story, your pageant experience, how ready are you, you think, for the 2021 edition of Miss Earth USA? What has changed in you um, over the past four years, Megan? I think it goes um, along the lines of building that self-confidence that I was talking about earlier. Um, you know, I've prepared every year for this this moment here. Um, I believe that all my previous um, crowns and titles that I've held are have led me to where I am today. So all of this preparation, hard work, determination, I just have to go out there and believe in myself and do it. There you go. And speaking of the crown, I think that that's the perfect segue. Speaking of the crown, that, that, that's a perfect segue for us to talk about your journey specifically at Miss Earth USA, the crown, the title, and the cause. Definitely, um, I should say, Megan, that um, we've done a lot of interviews already with the candidates for Miss Earth USA 2021. And we are so impressed. We are so amazed with the, the great work that you ladies have been doing so far. And you specifically, you have done something really, um, really... Um, really great on your end because if we're talking about Miss Earth USA and your advocacy, you have chosen to work on a specific one. 
And that is, the title of your advocacy is Land and Sea, You and Me. Then yeah. what is this all about, Megan? So this is composed of many, many different um, things. I love turtles. So ocean conservation, preservation is kind of my main focus, but I, <laughs> I couldn't leave out, um, you know, how our pollution and terrible things get to our sea turtle friends, um, which mm -hmm. starts with us here on the land. So I thought it was important that it's, you know, I need to become involved as well as my community and then hopefully inspiring others to do what we can on land to which then influences things out in sea. There you go. And I think you have started, um, this is a very beautiful photo of you. You have started some of your advocacies, but then this is actually in relation to your land and sea, you and me, you have started your business, yes. Glitter and Glam. What is this all about? Yes. Yeah, so um, at the beginning of 2020, um, actually right around the time that I <laughs> broke my foot in February, I created my own business called Glitter and Glam, where I customize reusable water bottles, much like the one you see mm -hmm. there, which I still use um, day in and day out. <laughs> Um, it is my go-to, goes everywhere with me, water bottle. Um, but that was another way to not only hopefully influence others to not use plastic water bottles or any single-use plastics, but to encourage them to also carry a reusable one so they don't yeah. come in a pinch to have to go back to that plastic water bottle. Now, um, Megan, I'm really fascinated with how you started this business. How did it begin? I mean, um, of course, we are we understand that your advocacy is very much in line with the business that you um, chose to start. But then how did your glitter and glam, which is so cute, I mean, <laughs> so stylish, how did it begin for you? Tell us the story behind that. Um, so crafting is a huge hobby. I guess you could call it that. Um, yeah. quite an expensive one because I like to get my hands into everything, but crafting is a huge passion of mine. And if you could bleed glitter, I think that I would. Um, I'm absolutely <laughs> obsessed with anything glittery, um, or anything purple. Glittery purple is even better. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I just, um, combined my passions with loving to craft and loving the earth and decided that this would be a great way to combine the two. I mean, this is a really great way to like combine your passion and combine the things that you love. Yes. Um, again, Megan Cox, you love glitter, you love purple, <laughs> and you love Mother Earth. That's so this right. is a win-win situation, right? Exactly. <laughs> the perfect passion. There you go. Exactly, exactly. Now I'd like to do, um, delve a little bit uh, into this one. Of course, this has been, um, this business of yours was able to really um, establish the fact or establish the premise that um, as businesses, we have to make sustainable and environmental friendly choices as consumers. Maybe you can tell us your insight on that. Why is it important for um, consumers or people to, really push for businesses to be more sustainable and be eco-friendly in their the yeah. choices of the products that they make? Yeah. So, um, I mean, every single person contributes to the where our earth is at, it, at its current state. And we each need to do our part. Um, I personally have implemented as many eco-friendly things that I possibly can I reuse just about everything, even if um, it's not supposed to be reused. <laughs> I try to reuse mm -hmm. it when it comes to um, the resin, which is the outside coating on the cups that I make. I ship in eco-friendly biodegradable packages. Um, I try to stay away from plastic as much as possible. I really try to just encourage others um, and as you see here, share little friendly tips every month um, right. to to just encourage others to do the same. 
Yes, and I I saw these like posters on your Instagram and your social media. I I, I yeah. just want to flash this again. Another um indication of how you love turtles. You were able to use them as your icon on your posters. <laughs> really yes. cute. <laughs> yes, and yeah, maybe you can share a little bit um about this um social media campaign that you started because I saw that you have been posting a lot of like eco-friendly tips on your social media accounts like what is yeah. like the whole premise about this yes yeah, so um on the 22nd of every month um i post a monthly eco-friendly tip um i started it after um earth day which is on april 22nd so every um 22nd of every month since then i've shared a tip um and i think it's just a great way to not only show others that they can do little things at home that maybe they don't mm -hmm. think is making a huge impact, but in turn, it really is. Um, and it's also really fun to hear from others what things that they do um, that encourages eco-friendliness. Yes. You know what? This is a really great way of, you know, building a community of um, building a community of lifelong learners because we learn from one another. I mean, there are things that you do that I am not able to do, but then because you were able to like show me how, how it's done, right. we become more aware of the other options that we have in life, right. most especially about taking care of the environment. So yeah. is, there, is, there anything that, um, is there anything that we're going to expect in terms of like this social media campaign? Are you going to do something new? in 2021 what is the story um, for that i haven't um come up with anything new um my wheels are always turning so it's quite possible that there'll be something new um possibly a drawing each month um for mm -hmm. a custom reusable water bottle to just get not only my business out there um but to encourage others that hey you can carry a custom reusable water bottle and it can be um sparkly and fun at the same time Yay, there you go. And speaking of your wheels always turning, <laughs> I want now to segue on another like aspect of your um, advocacy or environmental um, advocacy, which is, of course, your Think Global, Act Local campaign. And yeah. of course, before we discuss that, allow me to um, share this video to all of our viewers right now. Let's watch okay. this Think Global, Act Local campaign by our Miss Maryland Earth, Megan Cox. Let's all watch this. Oh, wow. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you so much, uh, Megan, for sharing that video. I think that perfectly captures everything that you have done, like the amount of work that you have done so far um, as Miss Maryland Earth. Now, I'm going to flash some photos here. I I'd like to um, ask this very important question. I think what I have gathered from that video is that it's really important to take um, action um, in the local level of our communities. Tell us why is that important for you in the state of Maryland to like take action in the local level first before yeah. like taking it in a global scale? 
So um, specifically in the state of Maryland, a lot of the body of waters um, that you saw in my video lead to the Chesapeake Bay. And the Chesapeake Bay is one of the largest estuaries um, and, you know, goes directly out into the ocean. So starting local, cleaning up locally doesn't get into our local streams and rivers and lakes that then go into the Chesapeake Bay and then out into the ocean. So, you know, really starting local, um, even in our own backyard, and then traveling all the way, which eventually influences the entire earth. There you go. Wow, that's a that, that's a really great um effort, and I think you have covered a lot of ground already in terms of the think global at local efforts that you've had, um, Megan. Um, now I'd like to get your insight on this one. Um, why do you think, in spite of all of the efforts, all of the awareness efforts, all of the advocacy drives that um people like you have been doing, there is still um, this level of indifference and level of, you know, um, unawareness among people um, about the growing plastic pollution that's um, happening around the world. Where do you think that is, uh, where, where, where do you think the problem lies, ultimately? Um, I think it's as simple as, like you said, being unaware. So one of the many things along with sharing what I do on a monthly basis on um, just throughout my year thus far is trying to make people aware and encouraging others to learn about their earth. This is the place that we have to live. And if we don't take care of it, then it's not going to take care of us. So it's important to truly take care of what we have in the beautiful land that we live on um, so that we can prosper years to come. Wow, that's a really great message about um, your um, efforts and drive to really stop plastic pollution and promote water protection. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit more uh, about the situation in Maryland. Um, like, 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 like a final question for, for the Think Global Act local efforts that you have, Megan. Like, what is the situation like in Maryland? And what is the thing that you want everyone around the world watching right now, um, what you want them to know about what's happening in your state? Um, so Maryland, like many states, um, are is affected by pollution. Um, Maryland, like I said, especially on the eastern shore, is surrounded by water. So it's important that pollution isn't getting into our waters. We have seen a huge decrease in um, specifically oysters, which are another way um, that the water is cleaned. Oysters actually are a huge um way that keeps our Chesapeake Bay clean. So, um, you know, being able to keep trash, keep any other pollution out of the waters and encouraging just as simple as oystering um, can help the marine life flourish, as well as a lot of Maryland's eastern shores. Um, Maryland crabs is a true and real thing. Um, mm -hmm. So crabbing is also a huge thing, especially on the eastern shore. And we've seen a decrease in the amount of crabs because our waters are polluted and that's where they live. Yeah, I actually saw one um, news report that you also shared, I think um, on your social media that the number of jellyfish, actually, you know, the number of like face masks will outnumber the number of jellyfish that we're going, going to find in the ocean. Like how yes. severe is the situ situation? Maybe you can share a little bit about that. Yeah, um, just just thinking about that, thinking of jellyfish you see swimming in the water whenever you're out with family, friends, etc., cetera, um, and replacing those jellyfish with, with face masks, just thinking of that, they would be everywhere. Um, yeah. And I know <laughs> jellyfish aren't everyone's favorite animal because yeah. they sting, but, um, you know, if that's a face mask instead, that's another marine life possibly eating, choking, um, et cetera, being hurt by those face masks because they're being polluted in our waters. Very well. Yes. And you know why, um, you know why efforts like like this that you're doing right now, Megan, is so important. It really needs constant reminder. It's the, like yeah. a sense of constant reminder for everyone. Um, we yeah. have to unceasingly do our part so that everyone um, becomes more aware and becomes like more 
um, more uh, concerned with what's happening around the Mother Earth, which I think is a noble Absolutely. thing that you're doing. Yes. And another thing that's noble, really, is, of course, the brand and the mission of Miss Earth USA. I'd like you to like, I'd like to hear your, your insight on this one. Why do you think the brand of Miss Earth and Miss Earth USA is so important nowadays, um, given the fact that a lot of the beauty pageants around the world have been canceling or postponing for the next year? What makes the branded mission of Miss Earth USA relevant nowadays? So our, the core of our organization is taking care, care of our beloved Mother Earth. So um, at the time of crisis, which we are in um, this global pandemic, the Earth is still being hurt each and every day. So although there are other pageant systems that aren't focused on the Earth, which are being canceled, um, the Miss Earth brand mission vision is carried through because we're persevering through the global pandemic because our mother earth deserves to be taken care of. There you go. Wow. That's a really great statement. And I think that is the perfect way to capture why you're doing this. I think um, there are a lot of things that we ha can learn from what you mentioned. It's the whys, the whys of why, uh, the whys of the things we're doing right now. And Right now, we want to hear from the Earthlings because, as I mentioned a while ago, Megan, there are a lot, a lot of <laughs> questions. So are you ready to answer ready. some of the questions? <laughs> Once again, to all of our Earthlings around the world, please key in your questions for our lovely, um, intelligent guests. I love to say this because you're so smart, Megan. I love, I love your responses to the questions right now. That's why I'm going to throw in a little bit of a challenge by okay. throwing in some questions from our earthlings. Okay. Right. This one is coming from John Paolo Sismar. Okay. John Paolo would like to ask, do you think overpopulation is an important environmental issue? Why or why not? I think overpopulation definitely is a contributing factor. However, I think that if we are smart and are eco-friendly with our decisions and day-to-day um, -day lives, that overpopulation won't be as much of a problem as you might think. So it's important to be smart um, and keep the earth first and foremost on your mind at all times. There you go. Thank you so much for answering that. And thank you, John Paolo, yes, for that question. You. Angel Strong, your fellow Miss Earth USA <laughs> sister, would like to ask this. What is the most pressing issue facing our seas that you want to help improve through your advocacy? Um, pollution is first thing that comes to mind. Um, it affects so many different things because it's in our seas, in our water. So by removing it, or at least extremely decreasing the amount of pollution that gets into our waters, I think that we'll have a much happier Mother Earth. There you go. Thank you so much, Angel, for that question. Yeah, <laughs> now, I'd like to flash this one. Okay, we have someone here really important. This is one of my favorites, Stacy Simpson from pageantry now and vip pageantry hi miss stacy thank hi, you for stacey. watching yes <laughs> yes and of course he is she's saying hi to me as well thank you miss stacy <laughs> for watching right now and we have here someone from something rather from ali m vula okay has anyone ever told you that you look like a young barbara streisand Oh, I yes. I haven't gotten that. I haven't. Actually, the one I get the most is Julia Roberts. I get Julia Roberts all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there, there's a Julia Roberts there. But then right now, I, I'm also getting what Ali is mentioning, Barbara yeah. Streisand. I'm going to have yes. to look up and do some comparisons. Yes. One of my favorite actresses and singers of all time. So I love oh, that. Okay. Thank well, you, Ali. <laughs> Yes, we have your one more coming from one of our team members from MEC. Remmer would like to ask, Miss Megan, since your advocacy is to promote water protection, can you please tell us more about what's really happening in Conowingo Dam on the Senskehana River? Are you aware of what's happening back there? 
I'm actually not. That's something that I'm going to have to definitely look up because it seems like a pretty pressing issue. So um, that's my homework for the night for sure. Thank you, Ms. Remmer, for bringing that to my yeah. attention. Yeah, but then maybe I can like um, ask like a different question in relation okay. to this one. I mean, in terms of like like water protection, I know that Maryland is surrounded by a lot of water. Like basically, you have a lot of coastlines, yeah. a lot of like like beaches. I've like yeah. I have actually searched a lot of the the sites and scenes of Maryland. <laughs> um, what do you think is what do you think are the most um, problematic areas, so to say, of Maryland in terms of like water protection? Do you have anything in mind? Like, um, like share? A big one that comes to mind is Ocean City, which is a huge mm -hmm. tourist attraction. Um, it's great because it brings in a lot of revenue for the state of Maryland. Um, but unfortunately, with any large gathering of people, um, there seems to be a large number of trash and pollution that follows. So um, one thing that is on my bucket list, um, of course, when it's safe to be around large number of people um, with COVID-19, um, is to travel to Ocean City and walk the boardwalk and encourage others to truly make a difference um, when they're visiting Maryland or when they're living there full time. Yeah, you know what, that's a, that's a really great um, insight on ecotourism because most people do not realize that, um, yes, it is really important to promote um, or to really support our tourist spots by going there, enjoying ourselves there, but then we'll have to also take care of them, exactly. right? Exactly. Yes, thank you so much for sharing that. And another question from Remmer. She is not um uh, she's not giving up. She wants to ask another question. Remmer, this is actually a really good one. Miss Megan, what does your local government do to encourage people to recycle? That's a really good question. I love this. Yes. So um most everywhere, um, even most trash companies here on the eastern shore do have separate recycling days to encourage those to recycle. Um, I know a local community college, um, not too far from where my house is, um, has a huge recycling um, area right on campus that anyone can bring their recyclings to, which is also um, very encouraging, you know, whether it's students on campus happening to see it um, or word of mouth. Um, another big thing at my work specifically, uh, we recycle there. So every little, mm -hmm. every little thing can truly add up to make a difference. Yeah, there, there. I, I totally agree with what you said. Um, it's really about, about like finding a system and a system that really works. I'd like to do a follow up on that, Megan. Um, waste management is um, a really huge problem here in the Philippines. I'm not too sure if in Maryland it's also a, a huge problem. Um, and you are, of course, you were involved in um, like uh, pharmacy. Um, uh, uh, you studied pharmacy, which involves a lot of like research and development, I, I, I should say, right? If you're going yeah. to like think of um, a creative or unique way to address like waste management problems um, in your state and like really... Um, really um, pro propose a unique way of like addressing how to address the problem of waste management in Maryland. What is that one thing on top of your head right now? Um, honestly, just, just being careful of what you put into the waste. A lot of times um, waste can't be reused, cleaned, recycled because there's been contaminants in there. So doing your part on making sure you're putting friendly things um, down so that it can be cleaned and turned back into usage um, another way. Oh, thank you so much for sharing. Now let me ha have here Akiria Valor. Akiria would like to ask, I'm not too sure if you're also aware of this. I'm not too sure of this phrase. Are you for or against the banning of fracking? I'm not too sure what fracking is. So fracking is um, the process of getting oil out of the ground. Mm -hmm. 
So I am for the banning of fracking because not only is it harmful to our earth, but some of the chemicals that they use during the fracking process can actually um, lead to cancer. They are very carcinogenic to our bodies and that when fracking, it can get into our waterways and our water streams, which in turn leads to a getting into our everyday water sources. So um, I am for the um, banning of fracking at this point because of those reasons. Wow, thank you. So again, this is this just goes to show that our um, Miss Maryland Earth knows um, a lot of the environmental issues that um, that is uh, <laughs> happening nowadays. Thank you so much, Akira, for testing yes, our you. Miss Maryland Earth. And allow me to like flash some of our greetings before we go to the last end of our, like the tail end of our conversation. Someone wants to say Merry Christmas, Maria Estela um, Fabula. Would Merry like to say Christmas. hi and say Merry Christmas. Thank you so much. And we also have here someone, well, the same person would like to say shout out for Jordan family in France and Winder family in Germany. Hello. Hello hi everyone. to all of you there. <laughs> And of course, she'd also like to say Mabuhay, Miss Earth. Thank you so much, Mabuhay din sayo, Maria. There you go. <laughs> and we have here one last from Remmer. I really love um, reading Remmer's questions. She's actually what we call um, the questionnaire of Miss Earth Crown. <laughs> allow, me <to> ask, <laughs> allow me to ask this one final question from Remmer. This is a really important one. Do you have any other ideas how to minimize the use of plastic bags and styrofoam boxes? Since th this is really in a great relation to your advocacy, right? Yes. What is your idea on this one? Absolutely. So um, Maryland is actually one of the first states to ban styrofoam um, from restaurants and things. Yes. Um, so that's extremely exciting. Another thing um, specific to Maryland um, regarding plastic bags is there are several um, counties in the state of Maryland where you have to pay to use a plastic bag. So, you know, when you're going to the grocery store or whatever, every single plastic bag is a certain um, amount of money. So that, in, in theory, um, deters people away from purchasing plastic bags. So that's something that um, is great. Another yeah. thing specifically to Baltimore um, the Baltimore mayor actually banned plastic bags in the city of Baltimore, which was a huge step, um, not only for the city of Baltimore, but I think in all of the, of the state of Maryland, because I think that's a great way to head. Um, one thing I try to personally do is to bring my um, reusable bag with me um, mm -hmm. and, you know, if it's in my car at all times, most of the time I remember to then take it into the store with me. And as you continuously do that, it becomes a habit and second nature. There you go. And you know what? That's a really great insight, um, Megan. And one thing that I also got from your answer is that from all of your answers, so to say, is that it's really, you know, a combination of efforts from like a combination, like a collaboration of efforts from the private citizens to yes. the businesses, to the local government. Because if we are all in this together and make that conscious effort and conscious choice to really make sustainable choices, then we can never go wrong, right? Absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's a community effort for sure. There you go. Thank you so much, Remmer, for that um, question. And thank you, um, mm -hmm. Megan, for that really great answer. And one last, one final, maybe two final shout outs. We have here our fellow um, pageant vlogger from Pageant Hub, Michelle Ann Constantino. Hi, Megan, hi, and hi, Michelle. Noy. Hi, Michelle. the same there middle you name. <laughs> yes, yeah, same middle name. <laughs> and I think um, Brittany, I think one of our queens here, Miss Earth Australia, if I'm not mistaken, was watching a while ago. Um, Ralph Sambat says hi to hello. Brittany, how are you? <laughs> hi, Brittany Dixon from Australia. Thank you so much yeah, for watching. Okay. There you go. And that concludes our hashtag Earthlings Ask. Thank you so much to all mm -hmm. of our Miss Earth fans, Miss Earth Crown fans for 
those questions we were able to yes. ask a lot of really good questions. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for your active participation on today's discussion and conversation with our extra special guest for today, Miss Maryland Earth 2021. Megan Cox. But now we'll have to end the conversation in a little bit, but I want to end on this note, Megan, since we are going to say goodbye to 2020 and say hello to 2021, I want you to complete this sentence, Megan. I am Megan Cox, Miss Maryland Earth, and this 2021, I promise to make an impact. I promise to um, really, truly go all in on preserving our earth, our beloved mother earth, and doing my part to make a difference. There you go. And once again, virtual applause for our Miss Maryland <laughs> Earth 2021, Megan Cox. Maraming maraming salamat from the Philippines. It was lovely having this conversation with you. And we wish you the best of luck on your journey you. to the 2021 Miss Earth USA edition. And we can't wait. We can't wait for what's going to unfold for your journey. And thank, thank you so much for gracing your uh, gracing our interview for today. But before we leave, maybe there is there anything you'd like to promote, like your social media accounts, like Facebook and Instagram? Um, so Facebook and Instagram, you can follow me at Miss Maryland Earth, um, which is down below there. Uh, definitely give me a follow so um, you can get our my eco-friendly tips of the month and see what other fun things I have in store. And I think you also have your own um, your yes. personal Instagram account. Personal Maybe account can uh, invite them. Megan Ann Cox. Um, and through both my personal and my Miss Maryland Earth page, you can also find my glitter and glam page for custom reuse of a lot of bottles. There you go. And again, again, follow all of those social media accounts so that you get to follow and you get to know what's what's new with Megan Cox, uh, with the Miss Earth USA journey, and of course, uh, her business, Glitter and Glam. Thank you so much, uh, Megan. It's been a treat having this conversation with you. And this is only the first of our many interviews coming up for our resumption of our special in focus series for miss earth usa because after this conversation with megan up next on december 30 which is going to be two Ooh. days from now miss arizona earth will be live on our mec tv in focus series so please do watch out for that and yes. of course um, on behalf of Miss Earth Crown, please like and follow all of our social media accounts. We are also being streamed live on YouTube. So please follow and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more updates and more original content only here on the Miss Earth Crown page. So once again, on behalf of our lovely guest for today, Megan Cox from Maryland, this has been your host, Noisa Balano from the Philippines, saying... Merry Christmas and advance Happy New Year to everyone. Maraming maraming salamat po. Bye. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Megan. Bye, everyone.